Yeah, Matthew here. This is the video to accompany my blog entry on the uh, Cisco Smart Install. So what we've got here, I'm on the uh, VStack director. And as you can see here are the parameters that I've installed as per the uh, blog post that I did. Uh, we have the image and the configuration which are assigned to my group here which is 2960 8 port power switch. Uh, here we have the line which is giving me a uh, host name prefix. These are the DHCP parameters which are pointing uh, to my file server as being my uh, TFTP server. The VStack director tells me that the VStack uh, is active on this machine and VStack basic turns the service on. As you can see here I've turned off the backup but I have configured the backup uh, function of the, of the uh, smart install to be going to the TFTP server. So we shall plug in our switch which is a 2968 port powered uh, over PoE and as you can see the switch is going is starting to boot now So this switch is running uh, 12258SE2, which is the same version it's going to be upgraded to. Uh, it's one of the quirks of the smart install that even if the uh, image is the same uh, as your standard image that you have on the uh, TFTP server, it will upgrade the, the image. So the initial boot is almost finished now. The smart install will work with a switch that's fresh out of the box that has no config or if you have an existing switch uh, just delete the uh, configuration and the vlan.dat file and, uh, and reboot the switch. Another important thing is to not touch uh, the keyboard at all when the smart install is underway because doing that will abort the process. Okay, the port is now coming up. Just need to wait for VLAN 1 to come up. VLAN 1 is used by the smart install by default as the management interface, uh, uh, management VLAN, I'm sorry. Uh, that is configurable. You can change the management VLAN that uh, is used um, within the configuration. Okay, and here's the first part. You'll notice that setting the host name using the um, prefix that we've assigned and then it uh, appends to that the last um, half of the MAC address of the uh, switch. And you can see that the, we have a log entry there about the auto install. Okay, now it's starting the uh, startup config upgrade and you can see it's received the 
base to 2968cfg.txt from the TFTP server. And now it's starting the image upgrade and you can see it's now starting to uh, uh, undertake that process. If we move back to the director and we do a show vstack download status you'll see we can see the IP ad address of our switch assigned by DACP and the client MAC address. We can see that zero touch. If you've got an uh, older switch which is before uh, 12 to uh, 52 uh, there is a method that will uh, allow you to use smart install uh, even though it isn't truly zero touch but you can see here the configuration has been upgraded the image status is upgrading and as you can see now uh, it's starting the download of the tar file And as you who are familiar with uh, the upgrade of software on uh, switches, this can be quite a lengthy process. So shortly as it uh, begins, I will pause the, pro uh, the recording here and then come back as the uh, installation proceeds. and the installation is now finished and as you can see now the um, smart install is requesting a reload and back on our director we can see that we've been successfully upgraded both the image and the configuration And while we're rebooting, if I have a look at the show vstack status, you'll see that the vstack is enabled and we have a um, series of information here which is showing here the, the director, which is the 3560 uh, that we're on, and the device. Now the as long as the vstack is uh, configured on both um, this unit and on the client uh, the VStack relationship will be maintained and uh, the smart install VStack configuration can be used to actually push images out to members of the uh, the group or and even to push configurations uh, so it's in some ways a poor man's version of uh, scheduled updates. Now our 2960 is almost configured, uh, almost rebooted.
switch is now rebooting. Uh, obviously our uh, startup config had a control plane information in there which is not recognized by the switch. And if I now press return you'll notice I now it's now asking me for a password because my um, configuration had a password uh, configured in it. And here we have our switch. And you'll notice that it's uh, currently showing the switch uh, host name as switch, but as soon as the um, VStack uh, smart install relationship is re-established, uh, that host prefix is now uh, affixed, which is now in the running configuration. And you can see here we have uh, fast Ethernet uh, ports have been configured with VLANs and port security and all sorts of other miscellaneous information. You can see here is uh, the VStack director information is in the running configuration and that's what uh, maintains the relationship to uh, the VStack director for smart install going forward. Now at this point uh, this has been a no-touch installation of the client switch. So at this point you can now do those things like uh, assign IP addresses, um, host names and break the smart install uh, relationship if you so desire at this point. Um, so uh, in other words this is purely uh, can be used as a, uh, a no touch install so that if you have a remote site or somebody who's inexperienced who can simply just plug in a switch and it will come up. But one other thing that the switch can do is um, do an automatic backup. So if I show the uh, running config on the director you'll notice I've got no VStack backup uh, so it's the backup facility is turned off. It's turned on by default and the default location for the backup uh, is a directory on the uh, director's flash called vstack. As you can see there there's a directory called vstack that gets created when you turn the vstack uh, basic on. So what I'm going to do now is uh, configure the vstack uh, backup to be enabled. Now I have it configured uh, to go to our TFTP server. The backup is fairly basic. Uh, it will do an initial backup and as you can see here it uh, the director backup success the device uh, did a configuration um, to uh, the TFTP server. You can see that here on the client switch. Client device uh, has done a successful backup to the repository. Now only two generations are kept and they are um, sent to the TFTP server uh, as you can see when I enable the backup or if on the client switch I do a write memory. So if I do a write mem command and we wait uh, a few seconds you'll see that the right mem has triggered a backup to the uh, smart install backup location and there it is. So that's a brief tour around um, the smart install which is a companion to my uh, post that's on the Packet Pushers uh, website. Um, hope you found it useful and thanks for listening.